My friend runs better than this game, and he has no legs. I stubbed my toe on the way to install this game. That was the most enjoyable part of the experience. I get a boner looking at me scared still, my fiend. I want him. Unlike back. my wife, this game still plays with my balls. My she son has been looking up nonstop. That she only touches the balls. You have to give him a fur. Well, I guess the balls in his red car. Scott. I've been ripped off. People love to hate. I love to hate. It's fun often with very popular games. Fortnite sucks, only kids play it, the PUBG player said. COD sucks, only boomers play it, the Fortnite player wailed. PUBG sucks, only PC douchebags play it, said the COD player above racial obscenities. And none of them were technically wrong. Back when I played Dota 2, I would leave bags of dog shit outside of known League players' houses. I couldn't help myself. I didn't actually dislike League or people who played it, but it was fun putting down that other MOBA game. The other guys, you feel superior. It's Nazi Germany with less steps. But don't you dare poo-poo a game I like, because I'm a hypocrite, and I'll leave a bag of dog shit outside your house with a note that says, hey, stop it. Gaming is such a varied experience, and no game is going to appeal to everybody. Animal Crossing isn't for me, it kinda looks like The Sims for furries. But that doesn't mean it's a bad game, doesn't mean it's a good game. But this got me thinking, can we objectively say a video game is bad? So much of the experience is in the hands of the controller, and if somebody genuinely enjoys a game, who am I to poo-poo it? Some people like FPSs, some people like RPGs, some people like World of Warcraft, and we call them fucking nerds, and I'm one of them. This question has always intrigued me with all forms of art, from music to film. Tastes vary, but if one guy got up on stage and just took a shit and one guy enjoyed it, we still can say it's bad music, right? I mean, that's basically EDM. But in video games, the player is as much a part of the art as the game itself. They shape the game to meet their own desires and can play the game however they see fit. I don't use parachutes because I'm vegan. Let's make love in the showers, not war. I'm sick of battle royales. Let's go murder some Animal Crossing players. But the developer is still the puppet master. They create the world. They set the rules and create the lines for the players to color in. And sometimes the picture of the outline is uninspired and ugly as fuck. The lines are crooked and lacking inspiration, and when you finally slog through it and finish, you step back only to realize you were drawing a dick the whole time and they charged you $60 for it, oh no! But some people love dicks, and some people can make a masterpiece out of those crooked lines. Gaming is so subjective, but we do have an entire industry dedicated to objectively rating video games, so it must be possible. And those scores are always accurate. So where do we even start with this question? I think we start with intention. Intention is important. Are the developers truly putting their hearts into this game? And I know, that sounds like some woo-woo shit. Cause it is, but you damn well know what I mean. Basically, are they being honest with the product they are creating? And granted, sometimes that isn't even a decision they get to make, but it's still the reality of the final product. Great games have an aura, almost inexplicable. You can feel it. Take Mario 64, you effortlessly bounce around from painting to painting, each with unique and memorable experiences that other entire games often fail to capture. The magic is self-evident, whereas some games, you can just tell that every single decision you make is designed to suck you dry. More thought was put into the cosmetics than the game itself. But what about a game like Madden, where EA clearly stopped trying in like 07, but they still pull a decent fan base. people still clearly enjoy the game. Can we say Madden is a bad game, or am I just the asshole? Both? Probably both. Let's take a look at Madden over the years. Did you catch that? No? Those were different games. 
and they charged you $60 for it. Oh no. Tom Brady is now a 95 instead of a 96. That ass is slightly more toned. Oh, and they added this new feature called the rewind where every time you make a mistake, you can just reverse it. So there's basically no point in playing. Thanks EA, I won't. Yeah, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. And let's compare Madden to another polarizing annual release franchise, Call of Duty, where people often say the games are formulaic and redundant. And fair enough, but at least COD has still tried to innovate within the framework of their style. The whole jetpack experiment, money system, and the most recent Modern Warfare feels completely different than any predecessor, for better or worse. And yeah, sometimes for worse. Oh. Uh. Okay, uh, man doesn't seem so bad. Or compare Madden to a completely different style of game. Say Ori and the Will of the Wisps, a game which took the beautiful artwork and music of the previous installment and pushed it even further with a more expansive world and complex movement mechanics like triple jump which you'll use to complete every single obstacle in the game. Ori and Madden are widely different games, with widely different fan bases, but a critical difference exists that puts Ori well above Madden, and that is the intention. Ori's intention as a game was more ambitious, honest, creative, and unique. Every game has a profit motive, but for some games that motive is way more impactful than others. Take the recent Warcraft 3 Reforged debacle, and contrast it with its original. Warcraft 3 was an ambitious attempt to merge the widely popular RTS genre with RPG elements, and this risk paid massive dividends. Blizzard could have played it safe and just produced another generic Warcraft RTS, but they were bold and pushed the genre forward, even to the dismay of some. And as a result, it captured many new fans and paved the way for perhaps the greatest modding community of all time, don't believe me? What other game can you have sex as General Grievous from Star Wars? Get assaulted by canned bread as Squidward while having Ronald fucking McDonald from Burger King throw hamburgers at you? Hmm? What game? Fair enough. The possibilities are endless. Flash forward to Activision Blizzard and Warcraft Reforged where you can't even play the game let alone have hot, realistic sex that would make GTA players ooze. Gross. A game should push the entire genre forward through innovation. Maybe innovative mechanics. Maybe a brilliantly written story with fully fleshed out and real characters. Maybe make the players the developers. What could go wrong? Oh, that's right. That was like 10 seconds ago. These bold decisions make great games. And the greatest games transcend the time they emerged. Of all the games that were made 10, 15, 20 years ago, how many do people still genuinely go back and enjoy? Not as many as you'd think. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Have you ever gone back and played one of your favorite games from your childhood and then realized, wow, this game fucking sucks. The clearest example of this in my life is when me and the boys would put up our screen blocker and play Medal of Honor, European Assault, and have the time of our lives. As far as we could tell, it was the single greatest FPS of all time. And then, a few years later, COD Modern Warfare emerged. And for shits and giggles, we decided to try Medal of Honor and relive the glory days. Modern Warfare was really good and fun, but man, Remember how good Medal of Honor was? The hype was real. And then we played. Oh dear god. It's horrible. You can't even sprint. That's such an obvious oversight EA. Time will reveal all. The best games of the past 10 years are apparent. There is no longer a debate. Time has washed away the superfluous and only the outstanding the truly universal still stand. The reason Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare was so revolutionary was because it took FPS into a place never thought possible. Custom classes, perks, killstreaks, campers, and toxic lobbies. Take this game back to Blockbuster and quit running up your mama's account, you bitch-made-ass motherfucker. 
when a guy tells me to go back to Blockbuster, I immediately ooze, and it's still gross. That's a great game, which is good for FPSs, which is good for gaming. That is why Modern Warfare is one of the greatest games of all time, and Medal of Honor is getting murdered by Joe Pesci in this next scene. Every game is trying to accomplish something different. Some games want to scare you. Some games want to challenge you. Some games want to make you question your own sanity. And what makes each of these games good or bad is whether or not they accomplish those goals. The goals of Ori and the Will of the Wisps is very different than the goals of League of Legends or Counter-Strike. If Slender Man isn't scaring you, it's not accomplishing its goals. If every multiplayer game isn't making you hate your teammates, it's not accomplishing its goals. And Madden stopped accomplishing its goals a long time ago, providing a competitive, balanced, and realistic experience of an NFL game. Concussions included as you'll be bashing your head against a wall when a guy runs one broken play the entire game. And I keep bringing up Madden because it's fascinating and an easy target. And the fact that so many people could enjoy drawing the same dick year after year. I mean, that dick must be doing something good. I just can't figure it out. So I must be the asshole. And dicks can fuck assholes. Assholes who just want to shit on everything. What does that even mean? I don't know. Did you come expecting a resolute answer? Because you aren't getting one, but you've made it this far. So just stick with me for algorithm's sake. This video was meant to be more of a discussion than anything else, designed to put my thoughts out there, and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. What game do you think is a big old schlong? It's an interesting subject. I find it fascinating and making this video scared me because I don't feel confident about my thoughts. I still feel confused. I'm always confused. In conclusion, I think we can objectively say one game is better than another. We can say objectively a game is bad. However, any game in theory can be fun. And I suppose that's the beauty of video games. And if you need any proof that any game can be fun, just consider millions of people every single day play Animal Crossing. That's the video. Please like the video if you enjoyed, and in the comments let me know how much you hate Fortnite because YouTube likes that kind of stuff. But now it's time to shout out the real heroes, my patrons, Manderson, D's Nuts, and Man from the Nam, and all you other patrons. I love you guys. You are the real heroes. Everybody stay safe out there and don't lick random objects in public places, please. It's fucking gross, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, that's it.